G'day everyone, Rod here. We're just getting set up, so uh, while you're waiting, please just let us know where you're dialing in from and we'll be underway very shortly. are seeing anything in the screen because it's just telling me that there's an error but if you're seeing it then we're good to go so just let me know yes if you are seeing uh, the image with the learn to paint logo and so on uh, looks like you are i think so that's all good we're about to get underway. Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome everyone on Facebook. Pat Adams, good evening. Linda Moore, hi. Maud, welcome. Waiting patiently from Hunter Belly. I appreciate your patience. Rosalie, g'day Rosalie in Dargo. Hi Sue, welcome back. John. Welcome, Taiwan, it went over there. Emily, welcome, just down the road. Mari in California, welcome, board, yep. So all you guys on Facebook are seeing it okay, and it looks like everyone on YouTube is seeing this okay. Excellent. G'day folks, welcome. Let me just turn that music down. So every week I'm just working on improving on what we do, getting better, so, uh, Little bit by little bit, we'll get there. So welcome back. We haven't done one since before Easter. And um, I took a little bit of a break over Easter and uh, been in, in uh, hospital for a little bit, but that's okay, I'm all, I'm all good now. But we are now ready to get back into it. So I'll just make sure that everything's set up. So welcome everyone. Um, I'll just see who's come on. While, while I just wait for people to come on, this is what we're gonna focus on today, is these clouds. Mari, hi. Teddy, hi, and YouTube, Richard, thank you, mate, glad you liked the music, Gloria, g'day, Pippi, Kentucky, USA, welcome, Jagath Tish Menon in London, welcome, Darlene in Alabama, welcome, Barbara, hi, Gloria, g'day, Ian, Julie, hi, in Canada, go the Canadians, Gloria doesn't see me, but I think everyone else does. So um, maybe just refresh your browser there, Gloria. Um, Ian Jackson says it's late, going off to bed. Good night. And uh, catch up on the replay. Um, Darlene says I'm not live yet. Okay. You should be able to see me now. There I am. Yes. Excellent. Good, good. So welcome. Um, we are going to do... This photo here, you can see, uh, I'll pop it back up in a sec, but basically you know, I went down to the beach over Easter, um, sitting on the beach with my wife, and we were just uh, reading and whatnot, having a picnic, and I took this photo, and um, people have been asking me for a long time, you know, how did you do clouds and both, you know, sometimes I get asked for oils, sometimes I get asked for acrylic. So I thought today what we would do is... Uh, We'd start off and we'll do some basic clouds using this photo reference um, with oils, and I'll use the water mixable oils. And then if we get time today, I'll then do a version in acrylics and show you the differences. If not, we'll do the acrylics in our next live session. So I um, hope that sounds good to you. Um, just let me know if that sounds of interest. So I'm gonna use the water mixable oils. Let's, I'll pop up the 
image there and I'll just get some paint out while that image is up. Can, I, can you guys just let me know, is the audio okay? Because I've had a few problems with the audio and um, I've been experimenting with different setups and I think we may have got it better than it was. And uh, I'm also working on a new way of, new camera angles basically, which will make the actual um, images you see a lot better as well. So, um, so just let me know, is the audio okay? Does it get too loud or too soft at different times? And while you uh, look at the photo, and I just realized I haven't printed out a photo reference for myself, but that's okay. Um, sounds good to me, says Darlene. Julia says it's okay. Good, good. Okay. That's excellent. Um, so I was having quite a few problems with the audio, as you know. Pat says it's okay. So does John. G'day, Robert Green. Welcome. Rosalie says it's fine. Okay, good. Well, let's get underway then. So if you look at that photo, and I'm going to bring this up quite a bit during the presentation because I haven't printed out a reference photo for myself. So um, I'm going to use this just as a little uh, starting point, if you like. Um, we won't necessarily copy it directly, but there's that one main photo that's got, uh, sorry, that one main cloud that has most of the highlights just round about on the center line there. So uh, we're going to paint that one or a version of that. And a couple of things to note about it is that uh, there's, it's basically greys and, and, and a warm white makes up a cloud or in this particular cloud, right? So there's a very dark band of grey that runs along the bottom. Then there's a mid-tone grey in the body of the cloud, which takes up about two thirds of the shape of that cloud. And then on the left hand side where the light's catching the cloud, you've got a warm whitish gray. It's not, it's not pure white, it's a, it's a white gray and um, it is uh, warm, you know, because it's catching the sunlight on there. So um, stand to make it a bit louder. Okay. Um, other people are saying it's okay. So I'm hoping that the, uh, the sounds okay for everyone. So yeah, so that's what we're gonna work on. Now, notice that the beach, like the water and the sand is about a third. And then the cloud shape is about a third of the canvas. And then we've got blue sky above it, which is about a third as well. So that's what we're going to do. So that sounds exciting. Let me know. I'm excited about it. Um, so come down to our palette here, the essentials. We've got coffee. That's a very important part of painting if you didn't realize. And I'll shoot, walk you through the palette really quickly. So I'm using water mixable oils. Uh, these are the Windsor & Newton Artisan water mixable oils. And uh, these aren't bad. I've been painting more and more with these and enjoying them. I'm gonna try a few different brands as well. I'll let you know how I go with those. And um, they're not bad. So okay, so what I've got here is French Ultramarine Blue. I've got a little bit of cadmium red, which we probably won't use for this. I've got alizarin crimson, okay, cad yellow and yellow ochre. And then over here, I've got titanium white. If you notice the, the palette camera keeps focusing in and out. Um, so I'm working on a solution for that. So look out for that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in some of this artisan thinner, okay. I could use water but I'm just experimenting around with thinner and so on at the moment. So let's pop a little touch of that in there. And we'll get underway. I'm just wondering who here is using, um, is using water mixable oils or have given it a go? Um, I'd like to know how many people here are actually using it. Um, I, I really think if you're, an acrylic painter or a traditional oil painter, you should at least have a look at it and, and uh, give it some consideration because I, I find it pretty exciting. Gonna use a couple of different brushes, okay? A large flat brush, medium, and a small or medium flat brush. Size six, size eight, size 12, right? These are real cheap ones. If you wanna spend a bit of money, you can get Windsor & Newton or you know a more expensive brand. These are real cheap, so. Let me get myself organized, pop those there, drink coffee, 
Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to play around. We're going to do a little cloud study, and I'll show you how to get the darks to the midtone to the light, and we'll pop it into a little seascape scene, um, which is always a good way to do clouds, I think. And uh, and then if we get time today, maybe next week we'll um, we'll do the acrylic version of it, just so we can compare water mixable oils with acrylics, right? And understand the difference. G'day, Deborah Sue. Welcome. Good to see you here. Um, Maureen has tried. Good, good. Darlene said it's on a to-do list to do. Yep. Definitely worth giving it a go. Okay. We're about over on Facebook. So I should say today we're streaming on Facebook, um, YouTube, Twitch, and Periscope. So um, welcome to everybody who's joined us. Teddy and Jenna, they both used it. Okay, excellent. Feel free to ask me questions as we get underway. I'm going to use a 12 inch by 16 inch canvas. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a, um, I'm taking a slice through that photo. Right? I'm not going to paint it landscape. I'm going to paint a portrait version of it, taking a slice right through the middle. Um, Rosalie says she's been using Windsor and Newton water-based oils. Excellent. And you use liquid for mixing. I've just ordered some walnut oil for mixing um, and for thinning it down. So I'm going to try that. Um, and for those who don't know, Rosalie's one of our recent um, more certified instructors. Uh, she's joined our program and I posted some of her fantastic photos up on uh, on our Facebook page recently from her very first class. I think she was in, in the group for about five days and uh, already done her first class, which is fantastic. Um, so if you're down in the Gippsland area of Victoria. Rosalie will be doing classes down there. So on the screen, you can see the photo. Let me get my brush. And let me get a little bit of thinner and some paint. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix up a little dark. Plenty of thinner. So see how that's like an ink-like consistency. For our drawing, we don't want, um, I'm just tapping it into our little thinner bucket here, right? I'm just tapping my brush in and I'm just getting that as liquid as I can. And then I said, we're going to run this around about a third is going to be the beach, water and sand. So it's going to run kind of like that, maybe a bit more. We won't worry too much about detailing that up. I'll, I'll do a little bit of detail work there, but we're not going to get carried away with that. And so then we've got another third, which is going to run through around about here, okay? And that's going to be our main cloud. Now, main cloud is going to be, it's going to run up sort of like that. Okay, and through there. And then it's got this, the darkest part of it is sitting just underneath there. And then we'll put up a secondary cloud there. And then it's quite gray underneath. And another cloud. Now, the thing with painting clouds is you've got to keep that variety in them. You don't want to have the same shape and size with all of them. Um, and also you want to get your edges looking right. So you can see that's a band through there of the clouds around about a third, and then the rest is blue sky, okay? So we've got water and beach, clouds, and the, uh, the sky there. Now that's just the way I took the photo. Um, so when you take your photos, it's important to think about composition. Okay. And uh, yeah, and Deborah Sue. Now, Deborah Sue, let us know where about some mistakes you are um, in the comments there on YouTube because Deborah Sue is the, uh, another one of our more certified instructors who are going through the program. And she's doing her first class on Sunday. She's got eight people booked in, which is fantastic. So just let everyone know, Deborah Sue, in the comments, whereabouts you are based. Um, it's great to see you guys getting off to such a terrific start with it. Well done to both of you and uh, everyone else who's in the program. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a big brush here. We are going to get some thinner. We're going to get some blue. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm working on improving everything as far as our videoing, live stream, getting the setup right. So as you can see, my, my head comes into the shot too much with the current setup. So I'm working on a way of avoiding that happening, getting much better close-up shots on the canvas. So look out for that. 
and uh, just going to get better and better as we go. And hopefully the painting will get better and you guys will learn a lot more and you'll enjoy your painting more, which is ultimately the most important part, isn't it? Okay, so I've just mixed up this dark blue. Okay, now the, the camera I'm using on the palette right now is not really showing that colour correctly. It's looking a bit phthalo-y green, phthalo -y blue, uh, but I can assure you it's ultramarine blue and uh, titanium white. And it's a fairly loose mix, see that? Fairly loose mix, it's not thick paint because what I want to do is just scrub that in, okay? Just get our darkest value for that, um, for the sky, into the top there. Like so. So you can see that's pretty thin paint. Um, okay. Get some white into that. Just lighten the value off. So if you could compare that section there to what I've just done, you can see it's quite a bit lighter. So as, as it comes down, the sky becomes a gradient. So paint it as a gradient. You know, like if, if I want to talk, to put different bands of um, values there, but we won't for the purpose of this little demo. But that's probably, if you were slowing down and, giving it more consideration, that's probably what you'd do. Okay. Now what I do is I paint up to the edge of the last value, or colour, before I blend it. And I'm not going to blend it much. So it's just about blocking in colour at the moment, yeah? Okay. Now, tell me, anyone can do that, right? <laughs> is there anybody here that doesn't think that they could just swish some paint around like that, right? That is so easy to do, which is why I guess um, you know what we do with the more method of painting works so well because it is easy to do. You don't have to overcomplicate it, right? When you're just getting started, when you're learning to paint, keep it simple. Keep it really simple. Now, what I'll do is I'll just pull some paint out of that brush. And I'll just feather in these edges together. Now it's pretty thin paint, so this canvas could be a little bit thirsty and I may need to work back over it. Um, in fact, I probably will need to. But at the starting point, we've got our blues in there, blue sky. It's probably a little bit dark. If anything, it's a little bit dark, so I'll probably work back over that and, um, and we'll just lighten that when we get our clouds in. So Deborah Sue is saying she's in Arizona. So if you are interested in doing classes with Deborah Sue, then you can contact her. She'll be teaching the more method of painting. Uh, Vernon has asked, do, I, do you need new brushes for water mixable oil? Um, I don't know that technically you do. Maybe you do. But I, I just, as a general rule, I have a set of brushes for my acrylics, a set of brushes for the water mixable oils, and uh, and I do have a set of brushes for traditional oils, although I don't use them uh, so much anymore. So yeah, I, it's probably not a bad approach, I, I suspect, to have different brushes. So I hope that answers your question there, Vernon. And um, anyone else, feel free to ask questions as we continue here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is mix up some greys because we have our darkest grey and then we have a lighter grey. So our darkest grey is going to sit in through here and then we're going to have more of a mid-tone grey in the body of the cloud and then we'll put some highlights on over here. Okay, so I'll mix up our grey with our ultramarine blue and our alizarin crimson. Okay and a touch of the yellow ochre. The yellow ochre will just push it to the grey side, stop it from being too purple, or too mauve. Okay, now that's pretty dark. We wouldn't want that up there. So it needs a little touch of white. I'll take a little pinhead of the white there. Okay, 
and we'll just introduce that. And then when you add the white, you can actually see what's the dominating hue in there. Okay. So at the moment, it's bluey. The blue is dominating. I think that's probably still too dark. Let me bring up the photo. Okay, so if I just look at the photo, you can see that the uh, that's too dark, what I've been mixing, so we need to just adjust that. G'day Liliana, welcome. I think you're over in Japan at the moment. Hope you're enjoying your trip. And uh, Yvonne, g'day Yvonne, how are you in Perth? Be early in Perth, it'll be still time to get into your first coffee, I reckon, in Perth. Okay, so I'll just lighten it slightly. Show you what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm just lightening off that gray. I know it's not representing the right color with the current camera, but I'll fix that. Okay. That's probably getting closer. Something like that. So you can see there I've got a really dark gray, which we probably won't use. I've got more of a, a, a value drop down there. And then we've got this lighter gray, which is probably getting close. It is a good photo, isn't it, Donald? Um, I'm very fortunate to live in a place where I can just sit on the beach and snap off photos like that. I feel very happy about that. I'm just looking at the darks in that. So you can see underneath that main cloud, there's a, like a... A, um, a line of the darkest darks in there. So that's what we want to get in first. Okay. Maureen, I, I have used only water as a thinning medium. And uh, that's when I started with the water mixable oils, that's how I started, was, was just water. Uh, what I found was that the if you only use water, to thin the paint down, it does tend to dry a little flat. And um, so I, as a result of that, I started thinking, okay, well, let's use the mediums provided by the different manufacturers. And so I've been using the Artisan uh, thinning medium, which uh, does a good job. Um, is that one there? Okay, so it does a good job. Uh, I've, I've also ordered some walnut oil to try that as well. Uh, and I'm still sort of pretty much in the experimental phase, I think, of uh, water mixable oil. But I, what I've, you know, what I've found so far, um, I'm pretty happy with them. I have to say. Okay. G'day, Michelle in Pennsylvania. Welcome. Good to have you here. Okay. Let us get back to where we're up to. I'll just take this sort of mid dark here. We'll just see if that's the right dark for what we're looking for. I've probably got that blue in the sky too dark, I suspect. But because we know what we're doing here, we can correct that, not a problem. Okay, I'll just take this lighter version of that gray that's see can you see like that's the darkest dark i'm going with and then this is the one i've just put up now on the palette it looked like there was a, a big enough drop in value as i put it up there i'm thinking ah, it's, it's very similar it's very close to the dark and i just want to get a lighter version of that so i'll add more light into that Sometimes you need to put the mix of color up onto the canvas, and compare it to what you've already put down up there before you can get it right. So, g'day Gail from South Carolina, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Ruby in the Philippines, good to have you here. Welcome, welcome. I'll just give my brush a little bit of a clean, take some of that dark out. And uh, really glad to have everyone join us on the live stream. 
Had a little bit of an interruption our barista, but we are back. That's better. That's a better value. Okay, so what I'm going to do is the light's coming from here. So it's going to light up this side here. So we want to have two thirds of this cloud shape in some sort of shadow. Okay, do the same over here. Keep those edges soft. Okay. So hopefully this is making sense to people so far. Let me know if you've got questions with what we're doing. But you know, painting clouds is no different from painting an apple, you know, or an orange, right? Um, everything's got at least three values to make it have three-dimensional form. You need to have a dark side a mid-tone and then a highlight or a light side to it to give it that three-dimensional form. Tiana, welcome. Martin, thanks for joining us. Sure, Donald, you can contact us uh, through the Learn to Paint Academy. That's no problem. Um, G'day, Devana, thank you very much. Glad you enjoy watching them. Maureen, I should have tried medium, maybe would would like the paints better. Yep. Yeah. Found it got clumpy with just water. Yeah, it, 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 there's a, you have to get used to the feel of uh, water mixable oils, definitely. So yeah, maybe try the medium. <coughs> Gladys, that's a good point you make there because like you probably know that I use uh, a lot of photo reference um, for the, what we do at the Learn to Paint Academy. And half the trick is taking the photo with the right composition already in uh, the photo because then you don't have to make too many adjustments to it. So if you can get good at understanding composition when you take your photos, then it makes your life, or it makes your photo reference material a lot easier or a lot better to work with. Okay. So I think what we need to do actually in the Learn to Paint Academy is do a... Um, a, a mini course on composition. I don't know whether that would appeal to you guys, but really just running through uh, the different compositions um, and understanding compositions. We might do that. So Deborah Sue, you may have missed the opening, but yes, we're going to, I'm doing this one in oils, and then probably in the next live painting session, uh, we'll do an equivalent in acrylics and we'll compare the difference in the in how you need to adjust your working method so yes we'll be doing it um it's it's going to be very similar process yes um darlene the, the camera i'm using on the palette uh is not quite right so after i finish up today uh for the next couple of days i'm going to experiment with a different setup with cameras and things and lighting and hopefully we'll get better quality uh, palette cam action. Gladys, you'd like a course on composition? Okay, well, I'll pop that in the mix. My pleasure, Ruby. Julie, you didn't like the Reeves brand. I don't know what the Reeves brand is. I'm, I'm assuming you mean water mixable oil. Um, it's interesting you didn't like it. it. It feels different to traditional oils, and it took me you know, three or four little paintings before I felt like I was getting the hang of it. So I would recommend persisting with it um, if, if you can, because, I don't know, just reducing toxicity is probably not a bad idea for most of us in this world we live in, where you're already exposed to enough. Okay, so let me get just some little flicky edges now, the, re the reason why I painted the blue sky at first was so that I could just flick this paint up into that blue and let it just create soft edges. Okay. And then, so I've got this dark band that's sitting underneath. Let's go back to our image. Okay, this is Sunshine Beach for anyone who wants to know where it is. Um, beautiful part of the world just down the road. But you can see there's that heavy dark line that sits under the clouds. Okay. Okay. And then it gets lighter towards the horizon. So I'm going to just lighten that back off now. 
lighten that back off and we'll paint that in under the horizon. I'll tell you what I don't, I haven't been painting on canvas, little store-bought canvases for a while. I've been switching to board and um, I certainly don't miss the canvas. It's very thirsty. Probably needs a coat of gesso on it. Whereas the board, you can paint really thinly like this and uh, the board just loves it. And it's cheaper. If you do lots of little practice paintings and things, you don't want to be buying expensive canvases all the time. So now I've blocked that in with that one tone, but you can't just leave it all like that. So I'll get a little bit of the dark and I'll just um, have a little bit of dark in there as well. The last thing we want is to have large areas of the same colour, right? G'day Hussain, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks Darlene, I'm glad you enjoy them. My pleasure. I, I enjoy doing them, so... Barbara, welcome from Connecticut. Devano in Canada, welcome. Clouds are difficult. I, I tend to shy away from clouds, to be honest, um, but in the last few paintings I've done, things I've been putting more and more clouds in, because um, I tend to like just having a, a wisp of colour, you know, like pastel colours in the sky. Uh, that's my preference, but, you know, clouds are obviously an important part of landscape painting, so we can't ignore them completely. Okay. So I've just roughed that in. So that, like anything what, with what we do at, at uh, the Learn to Paint Academy is we block colour and we don't go for detail and refinement initially. We just block in the right values, right? And then we come back and we refine it once we've got it blocked in correctly. So clouds are no different. Clouds are no different. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just run in a little bit of water. And I might just switch brush for that. And I'm not, look, I'm not going to detail up the water at all. So I don't, this is, today is all about clouds. Um, but just to get a little bit of water happening, we get a little bit of yellow ochre bit of uh, cad yellow in there. I'll lighten that off just slightly. Okay, because so I'm pretty sure that water's mostly, yep, mostly a green. So I'll run that along that horizon. Whoa, it's a bit dark. A little bit more blue in there. Okay, I'll run that along there. And what I'll do is I'll come back and soften that edge. It, when you look at, like, if you look at the photo, over at that right-hand side, it is a fairly hard edge. So sometimes you've got to just put your painter brain on and, and not paint it literally. Because if I paint it all with a hard edge like that, then what happens with hard, hard edges is that's where the eye goes. Okay, so you really only want to put in, um, you really only want to put in hard edges which is the interest or the focal point. Anything that's not the focal point, you want to try and soften out the edges or have lost edges. G'day, Ray. First time. Thank you for joining us, mate. Hope you enjoy it and come back often. And uh, Barbara, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, good question, Rosalie. Good question. Um, so I'll, I'll come back and I'll, I'll answer, I'll just pause for a moment. I'll answer Rosalie's question. going to need coffee for this though. So Rosalie, for those of you who aren't on Facebook, if you're over on YouTube or Twitch or Periscope, uh, Rosalie uh, has asked the question. Um, it, she said, it's an interesting that I've used the canvas in portrait position. Was this for demonstration purposes only? Not necessarily. I've quite often done seascape paintings in, in a portrait uh, format. Um, one of my favourite paintings I ever did had a, a fishing pole with some buckets and, you know, um, 
and it was a portrait shape. But the reason why I've done this is because if you have a look at that photo that I've taken, all right, let's look at the photo here. Okay, um, there's a lot of clouds there. <laughs> and because we're limited to an hour here because the batteries run flat on the cameras and so on, um, I would, there's no way I would have got through all that. So I'm just taking a, a, a section through there just to limit how many clouds we're painting for the purpose of the demo. And I think you'll get more out of it if I put more focus into one main cloud. So that's probably the main reason why I'm doing um, this format here today, Rosalie. Um, so I hope that helps. Now, I just realised we've got quite a few people who uh, are joining us for the first time. So I've put up on the screen, if, if, is, if, if this is the first time you've seen one of our videos or um, live stream and you want to find out more about what we do. So we have the Learn to Paint Academy, which is um, a full painting academy with oils, acrylics, watercolour. And we teach mostly beginner to intermediate um people who are just starting out through to that sort of intermediate phase and progressively more and more advanced courses, which I'll talk to you about as well. But if you want a free course, which goes into what I call the more method of painting, which is what I'm basically using here, then go to that web address on the screen there right now and um, you learn to paint.info. So www.learntopaint.info. Uh, if you go there, you can register for a free course and you, I think there's about four or five painting demos in that free course and you can uh, learn more about what we do and how we teach beginners. So we basically teach three steps, three colours and three brushes, and it's been very effective. We've had about 25,000 people around the world have gone through that free course. So, um, so if you're new, write down that address, and then after our live stream, go and register for the free course, and um, I think you'll enjoy that, or hope you will anyway. So uh, I'll give you a moment to write that down. G'day, Doreen, how are you? Good to see you. Lisa, welcome. Thank you, Lisa. We're, we're only about halfway through at this stage, but we're getting there. Um, Miriam, welcome. Miriam, how are you? Hope you're good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, Melanie. Hilton Head Island. You'll have to tell us more about that. Whereabouts is Hilton Head Island? Um... Sounds very interesting. <laughs> okay, so hopefully you've written that address down. I'll put it, I'll put it up again at the end. So um, let's get back to painting clouds. So we need to get a little bit of highlight action in here. Okay, so we don't want pure white up there. So we'll put down some white. Well, you know, my personal preference is not to have pure white up there. I think you're better off to um, to have it slightly grayed and, and warmed up a little bit. So I'll just take a little hint of the gray that's already on our palette and I'll pop it next to our white there. And then I'll take a little bit of yellow ochre, which I think is an ideal color. You can see how much yellow ochre I'm taking. It's an ideal color to represent sunlight, I think. I'll just mix that around. Okay. gone just a little bit on the green side. So the question is, why has it gone on the green side? Something you need to be aware of. It's gone on the green side because I have blue in the gray that I took, which to get a gray, I was gonna need to have, there was always gonna be a bit of blue in there, but perhaps I took just a little bit too much of that gray, maybe, um, don't know, but I can easily just adjust that. I'll just add a bit more white in. Okay, and that looks better there. So that's, that's warm. It's not a pure white. It's a warmed up white. With a touch of grey in there. Okay. Let me give this brush a bit of a clean. So I found that the best ratio with clouds is to have two thirds of them to be in the darker values, and then just one third in the lighter values, as a you know, as a general rule, it's not always the case. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of paint on the brush there, on the tip. Gotta be careful how you load that brush, right? So I, um, I made sure I cleaned it, and then I just, just put the tip in to the paint. And then what I'm gonna do is use a scrubbing motion. And we're just gonna work it in 
there and see how it just picks up into that blue? So be careful of that. On the brush there, I've already got blue in there, okay? So that's gonna dilute the purity of that color. So I'll just pull that paint out of the brush again, just load the edge of it again, and then I can work back into it. So that's why I left that little bit of a gap. Because when I apply this down, I don't want it to be too, I don't want it to get too dirty too quickly, right? Okay, so that's not a bad little start. I hope this is making sense to everyone. Let, uh, let me know if it's not, if you've got questions. Um, let me bring that one into there. Now, as one of the biggest traps I think we've putting highlights on is that you tend to paint out your darks too quickly or too easily. So just be mindful of that. This one's not going to get as much of that light. Now, I'm just gonna be careful I don't get too many repeating shapes in there. Do you know what I mean by repeating shapes? Like, I don't want to have two or three clouds exactly the same size uh, and exactly the same shape. That'll never work, right? Thank you, Miriam. That's very kind of you. Um, it's all just a process. You know, it's a process that anyone can learn. MIDI. Awesome, bro. Loving it from Aotearoa. I hope I said that right. Sorry if I haven't. But New Zealand. G'day, mate. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Thank you, Yvonne. It's lovely, says Miriam. Miriam, you're too kind. <laughs> okay, let's just uh, keep working. Now, see, I've got rounded edges here. I've got one, two, three round or four rounded edges. That's never going to work, okay? It's just going to be boring, too repetitive. So what I need to do is just perhaps just feather out a little bit out there. But that's too too much. Get a little bit of grey. Let's just soften that. Okay, just to break up that pattern. It's all about not allowing too many repeating patterns. And now I can just come in and I can just soften that back up into the highlight. If I need to make any of it darker, I can do that. Come back to that dark paint there. So you've just got to think, where would the darkest parts be? They're going to be further away from the light and underneath in through here. Okay, so I can just come into this side of the cloud there. Okay, it's getting there, isn't it? I think it is. Kind of hard for me to tell sometimes because the way I've got the current set up with the camera and so on, so I tend to stand to one side and I can't always actually see it that well. So um, that's why I'm going to experiment with a brand new setup with the camera where the camera will be right here and I'll stand behind the camera and then I can face it, you know, I can f stand front on to, um, to what it is that I'm painting and I'll be able to see it better. So that's what I'm going to be playing around with the next couple of days. And eventually we'll get to a point where we've got a really good setup. Which can only be good for you guys. How's that looking as a cloud? Now, given it's a, just a, it's a demo, it's, um, it's been a fairly quick demo. I've done more talking than anything else. <laughs> but how do you think it's looking? Is it working? Gail says it looks amazing. I'm just going to walk around the back and have a look because uh, sometimes I need to get a bit of distance. Yeah, it's going okay. It's going okay. 
Let me just get in a little bit of work into the water there. Clean off the brush, dry it. Okay, I'm just gonna soften this horizon. Okay, just to take the strength out of that along the horizon. That's better, isn't it? Just that softening of it makes the cloud more in focus. So, um, oh, thank you, Glenda. That's very, very kind of you to say. I, I really enjoy the teaching. Um, so, I appreciate you saying that. Thanks, Donald. Looks really good. Mari's saying, wow. Pat Adams, great. Love it. Thank you. Yvonne says it's working. Terrific. Doreen, brilliant. Thank you. Appreciate that. Good, Deborah Sue's saying good. Penny saying it's very realistic. Good, good. So we're getting there. I mean, this is so far we haven't done. Well, gotta be careful, Rob. Don't talk and paint. I've got green in my brush. I almost put it into my cloud. Give that a clean. Um, you know, we haven't done much with this so far to really just getting the right values down. Really, let me just develop our water a bit more. Need to bring up the big image, sorry guys. Okay. There we go. <laughs> okay. Just getting a, a greeny, a lighter green value for our water in here. Okay, now with water, the, the best thing to do with water, if you've got a hard line like I've got through there where the transition is, just take some of that same highlight tone for your cloud, and a little palette knife here. And then let's just use that as our first little bit of a wave there. Now I could have softened it out, blended it together, but why not just, uh, Pop a little bit of a wave in there, right? Um, just get a little, couple of little more bits in there. How easy is that? I mean, anyone can do this. Just takes practice. And practicing with the right knowledge. Because I used to practice with not the right knowledge. <laughs> when I first started out, I just thought if I practiced, I'd get better, which is, to a degree is true. However, practicing with the right information, the right fundamentals, it makes your life so much better, right? so much easier as far as learning the paint goes. Might not solve other issues in life, but um, certainly makes your life better with learning to paint when you understand basic principles, which is what the Learn to Paint Academy is all about, is just basic fundamental principles for you to learn and study. And when you've got those, giving you plenty of projects to practice, okay? So as that water comes closer to the sand, more of that sand starts to churn, churn up there, okay? How are we going for time? Oh, we've still got a bit of time. We might better develop this a bit further, which is exciting, okay? So let us get in, I'm gonna go for another big, big brush here. Okay, another big flat hog hair cheek bristle brush. Gonna get some of that white right there. Okay, yellow ochre and alizarin crimson. Notice predominantly I've used the three colors that we teach in the more method of painting, right? Ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, yellow ochre, and I've used a little pinhead of the cad yellow here and there. But that's about all and titanium white, okay? There are three basic landscape colors. If you're doing abstracts and things, maybe you have a different basic palette set up. Um, but for landscape, it's not the only palette you could use as a basic palette, but it's certainly a very workable one. Now, the, what, what I'm painting here is wet sand, okay? 
You ever been down the beach? Well, let's have a look at it. Let's have a look. Right. You can see on the right-hand side here, right, um, right in the bottom right-hand corner, the, the, the tone of that sand where there's no water is darker than if you come up to the left-hand side. Now, part of the reason is, not the only reason, but part of the reason is the sand on the bottom right-hand side is wet. The sand on the bottom left-hand side is drier. Okay, So wet sand becomes um, darker in value and a bit warmer, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay. G'day, Patricia. Thank you for joining us in Alaska. Wow. That's awesome. Glad to have you here. Sue, thank you. Cheryl, glad you think it's beautiful. Hi, Marie. My pleasure. Uh, with, when I softened that horizon, it was just a dry brush because I already had two wet bits of paint there. I had the sky and I had the water, uh, Christy. So um, I dried the brush out, pulled all the paint out with a paper towel and um, just use a dry brush with a very soft touch, okay? So, so this is wet sand here. And what I can do is, as that tacks off, so if you've painted with oils, you'll know that they, as the, whatever thinning medium you use in there, it'll start to tack off um, or dry out. So as that does that, I can then put a light, uh, light bit of blue sky color. I'll go back to that color. Pop it out just very lightly over the top, and um, sorry, <laughs> that's, my, that's the one challenge that I have is making sure I'm on the right camera setup for you when I'm talking. Um, yeah, so as this wet sand here dries and it tacks off a little bit, right, then I can get a little bit of the sky colour and just gently run it over the top here just to give the effect of uh, the wet sand reflecting um, the water. But what I'm mixing up here now is dry sand okay right there look at that bang dry sand right there now i mentioned you know letting the paint tack off you don't want to do that with acrylics of course acrylics need to either be wet or dry to work into uh, if they're tacky like they feel sticky to the touch, that's not a good time to be working into acrylics, I've found. Okay. So as you dry sand. Oh. Um, but because I'm doing this section here now, what's happening up here is that this is just drying off just that little bit. And uh, when I come back to it, it'll be a lot more pliable. A lot more workable. Okay. There we go, that's okay, isn't it? I'm not gonna do much more with the water and the sand. I just wanted to pop it in to give it context. Lorraine, thank you, Lorraine, appreciate that. Thanks, Yvonne. Yes, I uh, just gotta get used to making sure I switch that camera at the right time. Um, okay, I'm just gonna walk around the back, and have a look. Helps to get a bit of distance sometimes. Okay. So one other thing you can do is you could use your palette knife to get some interesting cloud effects. So I'll just light up a little tiny bit of paint there and um, I can use the palette knife just to get a little thicker paint happening um, in there. Okay. But oh, you've got to be so careful this is to me is one of the great challenges of painting is not painting those repeating shapes like that because you know just our brains just they go that way i think it stems back to our childhood to our parents and our teachers faults <laughs> i don't mean that if you're a teacher okay and look Painting, I think, is a process of correcting mistakes largely. 
That doesn't sound very sexy. You know, you can't really sell that as a idea to get people interested in painting. You know, come and do a painting class and we'll spend the whole time correcting mistakes. That doesn't really appeal to people. But basically what it is, like I put that extra bit of highlight there, but it's a little bit too much. So I've, it's, I've gone too far with it, right? So what I have to do now is pick up our mid-tone grey and just work that back in. Otherwise it's going to be too much. So I'm just basically fixing up a mistake there, aren't I? And I want to have this one not as highlighted. I don't want it to compete with our main cloud here. Okay. So yeah, I really do believe that a lot of what we do to become a really good artist is the ability to be able to put paint down and then correct it. And just keep massaging it back and forward and correcting it back and forward until we get to a point where we go, you know what? I don't think I can improve much on where I'm up to with it now. Okay. Thanks, Darlene. That's very kind of you. And Gladys, appreciate it. Thanks, Murray. And Pat, appreciate it very much. If I'm missing anyone on on Facebook, some for some reason I don't quite get to see all the Facebook comments. Um, so if I do miss you miss your comments out, then uh, it's not because I don't care or want to talk to you. I do, but Facebook sometimes it I don't know. I haven't quite worked out what happens to some of the comments on Facebook. I do see them afterwards often. Um, so if I get time, I will respond to them. But life's busy. I've, after here today, I am heading down to Yandina. I've got my paintings going. I'm the featured artist of the month, yay me, um, at a little cafe gallery in Yandina. And uh, so I'm doing that immediately after here. That's why I can't go too much over our time. Uh, and... Then what am I doing? Oh, and then um, this afternoon I am on the ABC radio. So if you're, if you're in Queensland at around about 4.20, listen out to the radio, and I'm doing their, uh, they have a little feature once a month where they um, do a, you know what's happening in art around regional Queensland and stuff. So I'm the presenter on that at the moment. Uh, so I've got to prepare for that. So I've got a busy schedule. Plus, uh, if you're in our, uh, if you're in the loose, bold, and expressionist, expressive course, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I will be filming the, another episode for that. Um, so look, I'm just. Really just massaging this now, really refining and uh, just getting the balance of it right. So hopefully you've got the general idea. This is how you do clouds. It's the same process in acrylics. It's just we need to manage the process a little bit more of acrylics. So we're going to do that in our next live stream. Um, I'm going to leave it there and just wrap up uh, for you. But hi. Let me know, yes, if you think that's been of value and, um, and uh, it's been helpful seeing the process um, of painting clouds today. Uh, just let me know, yes, in the comments while I just respond to a few comments. Yeah, Darlene, it, it is slightly out of focus and um, there's a couple of different reasons for that. And as I've been saying throughout this um, live stream, that I am working on improving it, okay? Um, So yeah, we, well, it's probably one of the most challenging things I've ever done is try and get um, a live stream and video filming um, studio set up where I can get different camera angles and so on. Um, so I am working on improving it. Part of the reason is the camera is over there and it really needs to be here. Okay, and I'm, I'm gonna play around with the setup, so look out for that. But I thank you for pointing it out. Um, Deborah Sue likes, I like your teaching. Thank you, Deborah Sue. Thank you, Barbara. Thanks, Gladys. Glad you enjoyed it. 
Okay, so in our next live stream, which will probably be next Tuesday, uh, we will do the acrylic version. Okay. Okay, so there's a few comments here that I you know, just didn't even see before. Um, Miriam, I agree 100% and knowing when to stop before overworking, yes. Um, overworking is one of the great challenges that I have. <laughs> um, I have to remind myself, thank you, Miriam. Appreciate that. I hope you have a great day. Stephen, g'day, mate. How are you? In Canada there? I um, hope you're doing well. Thanks, Rosalie. Christy, great. Thank you. Lisa, really does look real. Oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Gail, painting clouds is challenging. It is challenging. However, what I, what I hope to show in, in uh, today's video is that it's a process. Um, it's the same process that we use with everything we do at the Learn to Paint Academy, you know, the more method of painting. Let me pop this up while I'm talking. Um, it's the same process. You know, we, did, we started out with our drawing, then we blocked in our clouds, and then we refined them, step three, right? And to create realism in any object, right, whether it's an apple or a cube or a, a building, um, to create that realism, we need at least three values. We need a dark side, we need a mid-tone, and then we need a highlight tone. And so if you follow the more method of painting, the three steps, we basically use three colors on the palette, and I only used a couple of brushes, right? So we simplified it right down, and then we look at how do you create form and realism um, with the three values. So the process works, and anyone can do what I've done here, right? So a matter of just systematically working through a process that we know that works. Um, so it is challenging, but you know, a little bit of practice, a little bit of knowledge, Gail, is, is the key. Thanks, Julie. Good to see you, mate. I'll see you on Saturday. Uh, Mari, thank you. Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks, Yvonne. Have a great day in Perth. Pat, thank you. Oh, before everyone goes, I've got something I want to show you. Um, I definitely loved the painting. Thanks, Donald. It's just a little demo, right? So what I want to show you is in one second, I'll show you a larger painting and clouds. And there's one thing I want to just point out. Thanks, Sue. Mari, so glad you're better looking. Oh, so glad you are better. <laughs> I thought you were calling me better looking than last time. But that's okay. Um, Appreciate it. And so we'll do an acrylic version coming up. But before everyone goes, do two things. If you're new here, write down that web address, learn to paint.info, go and register for the free course, and um, and it goes into a more detail. But hold on there for a sec. So I want to tell you about Let's pop this one here. So this is a painting I did the other day. And oh, you can't see it. Bit of a bugger, isn't it? I'll have to hold it up. It's still wet, so I need to be careful. Uh, see that? What I wanted to point out is get the right camera angle. See how I've got those cliffs on the right hand on yeah the right hand side there, right? Come in there to the camera. Uh, if I didn't have those clouds in there, those cliffs would be too much. It'd be completely out of balance. So you can use your clouds to create balance as a counterpoint, like a, a weight or an anchor point to balance against the strong cliffs there. So, you know, don't just paint your clouds literally is what, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, use them as a device for good composition. Um, I think that's a smart idea to do that, right? So just because the photo says the clouds are shaping in this place, don't take it literally. Use it as a, uh, a device for better composition. I think it's really smart. Um, so that, that particular painting, I won't pick it up again because my hands got paint on them. Um, that's, I filmed that the other day as part of an advanced impressionist course that we're doing. Haven't released it yet, but look out for it in the next week or two. For those of you who want something a bit more advanced and a bit media, <laughs> a bit more challenging, um, we're gonna be doing paintings like that in the advanced course. And uh, what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna release one episode a month for about six months and you can buy each the episodes individually or you can register for the whole lot and i think that one took me about three hours so they're going to be three to four to five hour projects which is different from what we normally do in the learn to paint academy um so uh look out for that if that's of interest to you okay so time to wrap up guys thanks donald yeah it is a, it's not a bad little painting that one um i enjoyed filming that one 
Yes, Rosalie, that's oil. It's water mixable oil. Thanks, Sue. Pat, thank you all very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Hope you all have a great day. I'm off to hang my paintings in the gallery. Thanks, Barbara. All right. Deborah, Sue, you can teach that one, but that would be an advanced class. I mean, that took me a long time. I'd start off with some easier projects than that one. Yeah, and mostly talking about the clouds, which would be a good little um, workshop to teach as well. Um, so, yeah, Deborah, Sue is one of our more certified instructors or going through the program right now. You can check out the details on that on our website. All righty. Thanks very much for joining me, everyone. I really appreciate it. Uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers for now. I might just give you some outro music. How does that sound? Cheers.